All right, so just go ahead and get into the vehicle and put your seatbelt on. Okay. In some vehicles, you have the option of adjusting the seatbelt height. So that is done with this adjustment here and you would adjust it based on your height. You don't want the seat belt to be resting too close or too far away from the neck. How do you know if your headrest is in the right position? Not sure. The middle of the headrest should be in line with your eyes. Go ahead and adjust that. The headrest protects you from whiplash in the event of a collision. Can you reach the back of the brake pedal area with your right foot? No. Okay, so your seat is too far back. To adjust the seat forward, you go ahead and press this button here. And we want to carry on until your foot can reach the back of the brake pedal area. All right. Hey, can you show me how you would uh, switch back and forth between the gas pedal and the brake pedal? Yes. Okay. So actually the way you should do it is rest your heel between the two pedals. Yeah. And then you want to use that as your pivot point as you switch back and forth between the brake pedals. This will allow you to have a steady way of controlling your feet as you move back and forth between the two pedals. Does that make sense? Yes. If you don't do that, you kind of get a jerky ride. Now, some vehicles have a built-in footrest called a dead pedal for your left foot. It not only serves as a comfortable place to rest your foot, but also allows you to steady yourself around turns so that you're not using the steering wheel for that purpose instead. Also to get a nice smooth ride going. You want to treat the pedals as if they're made out of marshmallow. So rather than quick stomps, you want to be gradual with your motion. Can you explain to me what these controls are on the driver's door? These control the windows. Right. And which one is for the driver's window? This one. That's right. I'm not sure what are these for. Okay, so why don't you press the button on the left hand side, the one you're not sure about. Oh, I see. Yeah, press it again. Okay, and what is that one there? What is so this one for? that one is for which mirror you want to adjust, and then the cursor above it you can use to move the mirrors as we'll do shortly. And what about the button right below the window controls? I think there's an X on a window control, so that locks the windows. Yeah, exactly. It's child lock on the windows so that the passengers cannot open or close your windows. You will still be able to open and close the windows from your side. Okay, got it. Can you turn the car key over by two notches? Can you tell me what the lights mean on the instrument cluster? That's the ABS light, that's the airbag light, that's the oil light, that's the battery light, that's the engine light. What is the one with the exclamation mark? I'm not sure. That's your parking brake. So go ahead and release the parking brake. So now you can see that the exclamation or the parking brake light has gone off. Mm -hmm. Can you turn on the car's lights for me? Can you 
you signal to the left? Can you signal to the right? Cancel your signal. Can you turn on the high beams? Now you just flash your high beams. Can you actually turn them on? You press the same lever forward, away from you. Like this? You got it. Now go ahead and turn the high beams off. Alright, I'll meet you on the other side. Can you operate the wiper blades now? Sure. Oops. Yeah, that's your windshield washer fluid. If you move that lever up, that's your regular speed wiper blades. That's your high speed wiper blades. So if you move it one down, you go to regular speed and one further down, you will get your intermittent. So it will come on every so often. And then one further down will turn off the wiper blade and one down will just do a mist clean when you need it. Okay, that's good. I didn't know that. Can you show me the fuel gauge? This one. Okay, and what is the one to the right of it? This one? Yeah. That one has, shows the temperature. Yeah, that's our uh, coolant uh, temperature level. And go ahead and show me the speedometer. Okay. And the tachometer. Okay, and what does the tachometer do? Shows um, the RPM of the engine. Yeah, the numbers 0 to 7 indicate 0 RPM when the vehicle is off, all the way up to 7,000 revolutions per minute for the engine. Can you honk the horn? Can you tell me what the buttons on the climate control do? Sure, so these are for the temperature. So this one, change the temperature to go up to get warmer. Okay. And this one to change the temperature to go lower and be cool, cooler. These are for speed, to go up, and this one to come down. That's correct. And this is for the front defrost, and this is for the back defrost. Okay. This is for the AC. Right. And what is that button here with the circle? This is for circulation, I believe. Right, so that just circulates the air inside the cabin. Uh-huh. What about the button right next to it, the auto? This one? Yeah. I am not sure. Uh, that's for the automatic climate control that this vehicle is equipped with. Oh, so this one for the air to come out close to the windshield. This is for them to come out right by these um, vents over here. And this is to come down from your foot. Correct? Yes, that is correct. So go ahead and set the parking brake. Okay, and now go ahead and release the parking brake. It's stuck. So one way you can release it is if you pull up on the parking brake as you press the button, you should be able to release the parking brake, yeah, and then gently release it. Okay, moving on to the gear selector. Can you tell me what these letterings are? Yes, so P is for parking. Okay. R is for reverse. Yep. N is for neutral. You got it. And D is for drive. Okay. And... What are those M slash S mean here on the gear selector? I don't know what those are for. This car is equipped with uh, manual mode as well as sports mode and I'll show you those in a second. Cool. Go ahead and put your foot on the brake. Alright, so now go ahead and put the vehicle into reverse. It's not moving. Okay. Uh, there's actually a lever behind. This one? Yep, so you need to press that in. Mm -hmm. And now you can move right. Now go ahead and put it into neutral 
and put it into drive. Okay, and back into neutral. And to reverse, find it back into park. Okay. Now, I noticed when you were going from reverse to neutral, you were actually pressing the gear uh, release button. Same thing for drive, but in reality, if you're in reverse, you can actually just push the gear selector without pressing this release button to go into N, and similarly, you can go into drive without pressing it. You can go from drive to N without pressing it, but if you're going from neutral to park, it won't let you without pressing the button. And similarly, it won't let you go into park without pressing the button. And that is just a safety feature that prevents you from, say, if you're in drive, accidentally bumping the gear selector and having the vehicle go into reverse by accident. That's a good point. Last thing I want to show you on this was the manual and uh, sports mode. Once you're in drive, you can press over to the left and that puts the vehicle into sports mode. But if we start moving the gear selector up or down, it actually shifts the gear manually until such time that you move it back into drive where you resume the normal operation of the automatic transmission. We are in park right now, and it's showing us that on the instrument cluster. So when I move the vehicle into reverse, it shows us the R. Same thing for neutral drive. And if we switch over to the sports mode, we get SD, which stands for sports drive. Now if I leave it in sports mode and I start shifting up or down, you can see that the vehicle will start shifting as if we're in manual mode. But if I move it back into D, we resume the regular operation of the transmission. And we'll go ahead and put it into park.